Hi, Eric. Nice Hi. to see you. Um, nice to see you too. You've been uh, away with the non-international players, haven't you, yep. in Dubai, we one with the training. How was your trip? It was good. Um, as you say, I think there was about 10, 11 players to work with, which was a good tight number. Got some good work in. The lads uh, recovered early part of the week. Um, I think we came back in a, in a good place. Since we saw you last uh, two weeks ago at Manchester City, we learned the news about Sven Botman's ACL injury. Firstly, just how, how big a blow is that for you and for the play? Yeah, big blow. Um, quite a complex um, story around Sven this, this season since he got his knee injury. Um, initially had a, a partial tear of his ACL. We uh, obviously saw a specialist opinion on that injury. Um, and there was, there was sort of conflicting reports coming back on what he should do next. Ultimately, uh, our medical team advised him to get surgery. He, um, he himself wanted to, to carry on playing. And I think that we're always the, um, always try and guide and help the players. But ultimately, it's their bodies and they have to make the final decision. So um, unfortunately, he succumbed to the injury eventually. Um, but I've seen several players from that injury come back and carry on playing and, and stay fit. So it's a delicate issue for him. And, he now has a long period of rehab ahead of him and um, we wish him well and we hope he comes back in a, a really good place. So to be clear, it's the same knee and is it is it the same injury again then? He's, has he aggravated the initial problem? Yeah, he's aggravated the initial problem and uh, now it requires surgery, definitely. Because well, he's had surgery, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Because as you'll know, a lot of fans have been wondering in light of the news of, over the last couple of weeks why there was no operation in the first place because then this could have been prevented. But it sounds like it was largely... Player led then, based on what you're saying. Yes, it was, but of course the medical team advised Sven, and, and that's what, all they can do in that situation is make a recommendation. But ultimately, the player felt his knee was good. Sven felt his knee was strong. Um, he felt confident in it. He did a lot of work to get back. He sought specialist opinion, and they helped him. Um, and yeah, that that was how it went. Now, as always in these situations, we don't have the benefit of hindsight. I wish we did, um, but uh, yeah, now he has a long period. As I say, he's had the operation. The operation's gone well. There was no other damage to the knee. It was just the ACL, which is a great thing, um, and hopefully he'll be back pretty quickly. And how is he coping with it emotionally? Because it's another blow in a season that's been pretty rough for him. Yeah, it has. I mean, I, he is a, a guy that lives for football, so he will be having to deal with all those emotions when that's taken away from you, and that's tough, especially with everything that he had ahead of him, you know, such a young player and um, was doing so well for us, such a big player. So, um, yeah, now we uh, we support him and we help him back. And the good news is, as I say, there's no other injury to the knee. It's just that, that ligament. So that's a really good sign and uh, hopefully be back in good form. What's the situation with Lewis Miley, who you think has come back from England under 20 duty with a back foot? Yeah, he's come back with a, a back problem. We're seeking, again, specialist opinion on that. Um, it's slightly unclear what the injury is, so um, we don't know yet. Uh, moving on to the football, I mean, you've got 10 Premier League matches left. This is the, the beginning of the final period of the season. Obviously, we know you, you want to finish as high as you can, but in terms of performances and, and what you're seeing from your players, what are you hoping to get over the next couple of months? Yeah, I think with the 10 games we have, I think it's a, a really good opportunity for us to finish the season strongly. Uh, what we're looking for is consistency, consistency in our performance, consistency of results. Um, I think it's a good chance for us to build also for next year and to find our best rhythm back. Um, hopefully welcome some key players back from injury as well. And we can feel that strength towards the end of the season. And I think it's, it's important for us. Um, I think there's been a few quotes out there that our season's over and all, all things like that. We, we're certainly internally not looking at it like that at all. We're focused on um, building and um, finding some positive momentum. And lastly, what can you say about the meaning of the match against West Ham, another one of the teams <coughs> like you will be hoping to get back into Europe? Um, four points is the difference at the moment. Um, and obviously you want to be closing that gap. Yeah, we want to be closing that gap. I think they're a very difficult team to play against, very dangerous team. I think they've done well in, in European competition. They've uh, found some good Premier League form as well during the season. Got some dangerous players. Um, but we're back at home. It feels like a long time since we've played back at St James's Park. We'll, uh, we left on a, a good note in our last game there and we're desperate to pick that up again. Hi Eddie. Um, when you think back to 
the end of last year when Sven got the initial injury. Do you think his decision... So it was at the beginning of this. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so around the, sorry, when he was recovering from that. Do you think his decision then to come back with the rest, do you think that was perhaps influenced by the fact that you had so many injuries at that moment and you wanted to get back and help the team? I don't know. I think it's difficult for me to answer for Sven. No, I, th I think it was related to how good the knee felt. He felt, speaking to him, there was um, no swelling on the knee. He said the knee felt strong, it felt stable. Um, and so I think from the player's perspective, if I can put myself in Sven's shoes, when you feel the, the knee is good and then someone says, yeah, but you need an operation or you might need an operation and you'll be out for nine months, but you're not feeling that yeah. yourself. And I think it's very difficult to then commit to surgery. And that's why it's, it's, it was a really difficult situation for, for him um, to try and navigate his way through that period. Um, but I think that it's happened and I think we just have to deal with now um, the situation that he's in, that we're in. We're going to miss a big player for a long period of time. It's a huge blow to us, there's no denying that. Um, but the main thing is he gets back to his best form. And you're defending, just from what you, what you said there, you're defending the, the medical team here for their role in this. It's not, it's, not, it's not a setback he's had, it's the player's decision. Yeah, I think that no one knows what goes on internally at any football club. Um, and people can make outside opinion based on what they think may have happened. But of course, myself, the medical team, Sven, we're party to know what yeah. did happen all through the process. And our aim was to try and give the player the best care possible, um, whether that was an operation or whether that was he wanted to carry on and, and play. And we backed the decision. And um, yeah, I think from the player side, the player's in a good mental place. He's got no, no problems. Of course, he's disappointed, but now he's looking very much to the future. What was your take on the, the news yesterday regarding Sandro Tonali and the FA misconduct charge? Yeah, it was no surprise to us. Uh, Sandro, from day one, cooperated and was very honest with, with the club, with us, with the authorities and what he had done and um, the issues that he had. So yesterday was no surprise. Obviously, it may have been a surprise externally for other yeah. people to, to hear this news, but um, we've been supporting him through this process. I think the, su the supporters will be, or are, certainly are worried that his ban, which is up at the end of August, could be extended further. Are you of the, the belief that that will be when we see him return, or are there any concerns that there could be a potential punishment bolted on to the end of that? We don't know, is the, is the honest answer. I certainly hope for Sandro um, that there is no further consequences. He has um, suffered during this yeah. period. He has seeked help, he's been very honest, um, he's admitted he has a, an issue and I think the best thing for Sanjo would be to resume his career having taken his punishment and, um, and having learnt a lot of lessons from this. Yeah, and, and how is he with that recovery and that treatment plan? I know you've, we've seen him out training here and you said he's trained very well over the last five months but how is he with his recovery from the, the addiction that, that you touched on there? Yeah, he is seeking help on a regular basis. This is something that won't go away for him. So he um, has regular meetings in Italy and in England um, to deal with the, the problems that he has. Um, but I have to say mentally, he's very um, been very good in his training sessions. He's been very good off the pitch. He's been a brilliant teammate to the people here in supporting teammates and training really well to set a positive example. His English has improved a lot as well, which has been great. He's communicate now really well with his teammates, which is such an important thing. I'm really positive about his, his comeback when that is. They don't have a huge impact on the team. You said a moment ago um, you're hoping to have a few of your injured players back in these last 10 games of the season. For the match tomorrow against West Ham, are we likely to see either Barnes, Trippier or, or Livermento? Um, yeah, possibly. Let's wait and see. All three possibilities and all three. Let's wait and see, Keith. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Come on, Neddy. Uh, good to see you. After the news on Sandra, obviously Sven, the injury news of the international break, I've seen many people trying to almost sum up Newcastle United season. So I suppose the best person is to ask is you. And that is, is there a word or a phrase that does sum up Newcastle United season so far, given everything that's happened? I think cha challenging for sure. Like uh, you say, the international break, a chance to recharge and <laughs> it's certainly not been that for me it's been uh, it's following suit from the rest of the season mm. really where it has been there's been things thrown up that have just been there to test us all the time but I think if we can come through this season 
in a positive way, uh, with a positive finish. I think we'll look back on a season that's really um, helped us grow. And I think we'll be better for it in every sense. Um, but of course, we have to have that positive ending, I think. Um, and that's what we're desperate for. And um, we committed to this last two weeks to, to really try and improve the performance of individuals and the team for the players that were left behind. And of course, the, the other lads went away on international duty and the majority <coughs> did very well, which is great to see. Um, but hopefully we come back in a good place together. Just on Sandro's situation, in a world where there's, you know, there's headlines and everything, is it easy to forget that this is an illness, this is an addiction, this is a young man who, who does need help at the end of the day? Well, very much so. And of course, the, the news that, um, that there was an FA charge, as I say, that, that, that illness didn't stop when he moved from Italy to England. That, that illness was there and um, people should look at it that way, as you've suggested. Not let's throw the book at him and let's punish him even further because that, I, I don't think that gets to the root of the problem. We need to protect all our players um, because this is something that's open to everybody and becoming a bigger problem in society. So um, this isn't just a problem for Sandra. You talk about how, how challenging the kind of international break is. It's easy to forget that you know last time you were in Dubai had such a big impact on the season. But what sort of impact are you hoping that that short break is going to have, at least in the short? Well, I think it was a good chance for us to just change the environment for the players. Um, you know, sometimes you're in a long season and you're in the same place, the same stimulation. Um, sometimes you can just go away and you, you just the world feels brighter even though we lost the game against Manchester City um, after a couple of days you begin to to focus on the future and um, a positive outlook it was a good environment for us to work in and we came back to Newcastle I think in a much better place ready to commit to the, the rest of the season you mentioned the lads are away on international duty but a lot of people were asking Anthony Gordon how it felt to make his first senior appearance for England when his first senior cap how does that feel for a club manager to see someone like Anthony, who's worked so hard over a period of time, <coughs> actually achieve one of his life goals like that? Yeah, it's a really satisfying feeling, I think, for for me uh, to look at Anthony and all the, the players that are travelling all over the world, representing the country, a, a huge feeling of, of pride. Um, I've seen how hard Anthony's had to work for that moment. I've seen what he's given to the process to achieve that. Um, and it hasn't been easy for him. He's had to really work at every aspect of his game. He's been committed, he's had some difficult moments, um, but then this season he's really flourished and produced some really consistent performances. So to see him get that moment, I knew how much it would mean to him. Um, of course, then mixed feelings when you're watching the games, you're thinking, please <laughs> don't pull up, just finish the game well. And um, I thought he played really well and I, it was great to see him and Bruno going, going against each other. Just finally, on West Ham, you mentioned how good a season they're having once again in Europe, but there seems to have been talk over David Moyes and his future. Does that kind of show up just how much fragility, I guess, there is about managers these days, despite the job that David's done down at West Ham? Well, it does. I mean, it's, it's crazy, really. I think he's been consistent uh, in the Premier League now for such a long time. You know what you're going to get from his teams. They're very, very difficult to beat. They're always committed. Um, they have quality. I think he's done an incredible job there. Um, obviously, silverware last year and then um, a good, consistent campaign this year. So, yeah, we're all under pressure. We're all in difficult jobs. And you know that a bad spell um, brings pressure. That just, I think, goes with the territory now. That's it. That's it. Andrew? Hi, Eddie. Um, the Lewis Miley injury creates a potential opportunity for Elliot Anderson. How ready is he now to start the game? He's getting there. Yeah, he's had a really positive two weeks. Um, he looks stronger, he looks more robust, and that just comes from training time. He's trained well, he's a really talented player, and he's someone that I really want to, to see stay fit and do well towards the end of the season. Dubravka was sent home by Slovakia um, from his international duties um, on Monday. Um, how is he, and is he ready to play tomorrow? Yeah, he's fine, no problems. Um, Amanda Stavely, can I ask you about that? I appreciate that um, the bankruptcy uh, proceedings go, dates back a long time. It's a personal matter, a long time before she um, joined Newcastle United. But can you assure the fans that uh, whatever the outcome of that, it won't impact on her ability to manage this club? Well, I saw her the, the day after and she was in really good spirits and she was here focused on Newcastle matters and trying to help the club. So I can assure everybody that she's fully committed. Just 
going back to this, then you said earlier that a player knows his, his body better than anybody else. Would, would this experience make you less reluctant to allow a player his, uh, his head in those circumstances and go more with the medic, or is that just one of the imponderables of the management? You can't force a player to have an operation. No, ma no matter what um, an, an opinion may be from, from internal, um, the player has to allow his body to be operated on. And Sven was very, very certain in his mind what he wanted to do. So for me, once you have that position, unless you can um, communicate with the player and, and make him change his mind, which Sven was adamant, he, his knee felt good and he wanted to carry on. Um, I think we have to support him then and, and move forward with the process. And just uh, generally, you, you've spoken in the past about your first season in management and the challenges that raised there. This season, it seems like you've been fighting a different fire every week. What, what have you learned from this season about yourself as a, as a manager? Yeah, um, I, th I think I'm pretty good at when you get bad news, which <laughs> this season we've had quite a lot of, of sort of parking it and then trying to deal with what you what you have rather than focusing on what you've just lost or missed or the situation. Um, it's very easy to focus on the negative and, and unfortunately that then swallows you. So you've got to leave it behind and you've got to, you've got to go forward with um, whatever the situation is, you've got to make the best of it. So I, I think I'm quite good at doing that. Although with each blow sort of we've had this season, it's become harder to do in a way. Um, but yeah, we have to keep getting results. We have to keep mo moving the team forward. We have to be very positive. As I said, there will always be a future for, for Newcastle through this season. And we just have to uh, finish the season in the strongest way possible and then learn all the lessons from this year, come back, regroup. <coughs> Uh, and we'll be, we'll be better for it next year, I have no doubt about that. Uh, I know you want to win every game, but how do you categorise this one? Is it in that kind of must-win bracket, given you know, the games you've got after it? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all must-win. I, I don't look at any game any differently. Um, this is a home game. Uh, we're back at home after a long period of time, as I said earlier. Our last home game was, was a good win for us. Uh, this will be a, a similar game, a, a very difficult game. The expectation will be on us. We, we'll try and embrace that. We'll attack the game in the way that we know we can and um, try and produce our best performance. And with the national break, obviously, the Lewis Miley injury kind of probably hurt more than all of them because it, it was another 20 game. I know you want to let him go, but is it going to get to a point where you are going to have to look at the amount of games? Well, certainly the younger players as well. Yeah, Louis for me has always been um, in a position this year with the games that he was playing that, that I was very, very wary of his minutes, always trying to protect him when I felt I could, um, not start him when I had another option. Um, because he's so young and his body's still developing, he's still growing, his bones are still forming. Um, when you forget, when you look at him and you see that his presence and his size and his maturity, you forget how how young he is, he, he certainly doesn't act like a 17-year-old um, and his body isn't like a 17-year-old. So I think this is a warning sign that, not, not that necessarily that I needed, but maybe externally everyone else needs to go, we have to protect him and we have to look after him, he's such a talent um, and we can't treat him like he's 23, 24. Just one on Sean Longstaff, obviously, you mentioned he's been playing through an injury this season. In that way, has he been not an unsung hero, but someone who's perhaps been, people haven't given him enough credit for doing what he's done. Yeah, I think Sean would, would probably say now he's in a good place physically. I, I don't think he's playing with an injury now. He has been at certain times during this season. He's put himself on the pitch ca carrying a problem. Um, I think Sean is a, a slight unsung hero anyway. I think his love for the club doesn't guarantee you anything. You know, he is Newcastle through and through. His family are. Um, that doesn't guarantee you anything, but I, I do think he's given so much to the club and will continue to do so. He always gives his best um, and he's always fully committed to what we ask him to do. Um, I'd love to see him embraced, backed, supported. I know he has been during match days and um, I know he really values that support from everybody. Jamal Lascelles came into the side and did so well the last time Sven Botman was injured. Obviously, it's been a few months since his last Premier League start. 
Yeah, I think Jamel this season, when he's played, has, has done very well. Um, I thought he did well against Manchester City uh, in our last game. No, no problems with his performance. I thought he was strong. He looked physically good. Um, he formed a really good partnership with Fabian. Um, as you say, the last time Sven was out, I thought they did very well together, although Fabian uh, moved sides. Um, and I would back them with the other centre-halves that we have available. Dan, Paul Dummett, um, that uh, we'd be strong enough to cope. Just to clarify, obviously Sandro Tinali has been training with you since the initial ban. Do you expect that to remain the case regardless of the FA trial? Yes. Uh, Chris, Luke and then Craig. Morning, Eddie. I Morning. Mean, you, you, you've spoken about Lewis Miley's injury and, and that you've tried to protect him. I mean, how many of the injuries that have happened over the course of the last few months do you think have partly been a cause of the fact that you've maybe had to pay players in a stage when ideally if you'd had a fully fit squad you wouldn't have had to put them in that sort of situation? Um, it's difficult to put a number on that. I think, yeah, there's been a, a, a I wouldn't say overloaded with players that have kept played with injuries. I, th I think one or two have. Um, and there would be certainly one or two situations when I would like the freedom to maybe have rested players at certain times, but that hasn't been the case. Um, but I think if you ask any player, it's very easy after the event, if you ask any player in that situation, do you want to play or do you want to rest? They'll always go, I want to play. Um, and so it's up to us to make the decision for the players. Um, and that, that's probably the, the power that I've had taken away. And in terms of Sven, and this is casting fairly far forward, but does, could that potentially change your summer plans as well, that someone who could be out for a significant period next season as well? Certainly something we have to be aware of, of course, yeah. We have to look at the squad and see the depth we have in that position and then, and then make a decision. Uh, it's too early to say what we will or won't do. Luke? Just one on Tonali. Um, are you anticipating that the ban will run <coughs> concurrently with the existing ban, if you know what I mean, so not imposing a second one? Is that your understanding of the situation? Um, I'd say at the moment that's a hope. Uh, we, we don't have any specific information to say that there's clarity on it at the moment, but we hope, and I, I certainly hope strongly for Sandro that that will be the case. I'd be hugely disappointed, I think, if he was, um, if that ban was extended. Managers earn the big bucks to make hard decisions. Um, has this been, has this been a, a tough season for you personally? I, I think I've said before. I think it, yeah, it's been hugely challenging. But that is what I'm here for. I'm here to take the rough with the smooth. I'm here to um, manage in choppy waters as well as calm waters. You have to have the ability to do both. Um, I hope to show strong leadership in difficult moments. I hope to make good decisions under pressure. My main thing at the moment is to see really good performances from the team on a consistent basis in this last group of games that we have. And then I will look forward to next season because, as I said earlier, I know we'll be stronger for what's happened this year. How important is it these 10 games? Is it, it's a bit of a cliche, but is it like a mini season? I mean, it's important to put to bed everything that's happened to <coughs> and everybody come together and, you know, for, for these last 10 games and try and finish with something tangible that's really, really, really consistent. Yeah, I don't think people aren't together. Certainly from inside the building here, we are together. We're 100% with each other. I think we have been throughout the season and I think it's been a real credit to everybody in the squad that, that hasn't become, we haven't become fragmented. We haven't split away. We've been focused on trying to get positive results. That's been a real strength. I think we have kept our, our motivations levels very high, um, but we've been hit and we've taken some blows. Um, but the group of players have responded, I think, really well. Thank you. Craig? Morning, Eddie. Uh, yesterday's news by the FA revealed that obviously you said you weren't surprised with Sandra or Jamal. As a Newcastle player, I'm proving on the opening day of the season when you guys played Aston Villa. Do you feel let down by that, the player, even after the move, continues to gamble as a, as a Newcastle player? As I said earlier, I don't feel let down by that. Sandro has an illness. Um, and I think if this was associated with another form of illness, I think there'd be a lot more sympathy and understanding. So, as I said, that, didn't, that illness didn't stop the minute he moved to England. That, that illness was still there. And it was only when um, everything that had happened, and as I said instantly, he was very apologetic and very um, sorry for what he had done, that he, he needed help. And we've tried, along with Sandro's representatives, along with his family, to get him the help that he needs to recover from this. And how do you reflect on the transfer as a whole? There was obviously the internal investigation led by Dan Ashworth. What was the outcome of that? 
Um, I've got no idea. You'll have to ask Dan. How do you how do you reflect on the transfer in terms of identifying Sandro? Could anyone have covered no more could Dan Ashworth have been more in his role to identify the problems? I think I've answered this question before. I, I think when someone has something they want to hide on a personal level from their closest family, I think there's no way a football club could have known. Um, so I, I think this could happen to any any club at any time, uh, and even for us in the future, you just you just don't know. I think it's very very difficult to dig that deep if someone wants to hide something. So um, we'll endure, we'll endeavour to do obviously to to do everything possible to make sure any transfer we, we have in the future um, that there's no problems like this uh, occurring again. Martin? Hi Eddie, how, how big a blow to sign with the team would, would a fan be that extends his time? That goes without saying, I mean, I, you can't quantify how much we've missed him this year. In, in difficult moments we've had a player that's training every day, we haven't been able to put a midfield together and, and he's there and we can't use him. And that, that's been yeah, frustrating beyond belief, really, for us, because we know the qualities that he has, and he's been the player we've needed um, at certain state, well, a lot of times this year. So if that ban was extended, we would still be feeling that pain, and so would Sandro, because he wants to play football. And you know he's in a good place. He's doing well off the pitch. I think he should be allowed the chance now to uh, move forward with his career. Did, did the club have no idea of his gambling problems until the FA charge or the Italian FA charge came on him? No, no idea. And did he tell his Newcastle teammates about the problem at some point? Yeah, that's for Sandro to discuss, not for me. Simon? Any detail of what Sandro has done to overcome the problem? And he, he was meant to go to Italy for 16 sessions, I think, with the Spanish organisation. What's he actually been, been doing? Uh, yeah, that, again, I think that's for Sandro to talk about, not, not for me. Um, do you, is it time for, I mean, you behind the gambling advert there, it's funny, is, is it time football ban or turn down money from gambling soon? I think it's a, a real issue that needs discussing. Um, this isn't a Newcastle problem. This, this is something that um, is open to every young person in the world and is becoming more accessible and more... Um, more relevant and I think um, I'm not here to say what should happen but I'm here to say that there needs to be thought from, from everybody about what we do next. Yeah. Uh, Oscar, um, how concerning for you is it if it's found that Sandro gambled on Newcastle games? Yeah, I think I've discussed it enough, I don't think I should go into it any further. There are no trust issues going forward with Sandro? In, in football sense or? In football sense, as I said, if it's, if it's found that he's actually bet on own games. I said before, I think it's an illness. I think it's something that we, we need to help him with. We've got no issues trusting Sandro at all. Um, he's responded to what's happened to him in this season, in this situation, outstandingly well. Kieran, then, Louise? I mean, behind the scenes, how much has Sandro suffered from the inside running life through him? Yeah, I think it only he will truly know how he's how he's felt at certain times. Um, I think it's been difficult for him to um, train every day knowing that he's not playing at the weekend for him to have the feeling. I imagine the feelings going through him would, would have been ranging from lots of different emotion, emotions. You've got to remember, he'll be feeling probably with every injury that we have had in midfield and every problem we've had in midfield that I should be there for my teammates and he's not. He'll be feeling that responsibility and that feeling and that that's very very difficult for him to take and he's had to then return to training every day and front that up he, I think he's handled himself so well in those moments um, and he's kept his training level very very high for the group um, but as I say only he can explain really how he's felt but from my side I've seen a player that's been really strong and will come out better for this experience talk about anything this season strongly I mean from a recruitment perspective do you think that's important that players watching on and see Yeah, I mean, European football is there for us. It's if it'll be in our hands. Um, it's uh, something that we want to go for and we want to try and achieve. I think that would be a, a great way for us to finish the season, and that would help us in lots of different ways. Um, and of course, I think playing well and playing attractive football and playing the style that you want will help you recruit players. That's always been uh, something that we've used before to help us attract uh, the better players in. Thanks, Louise. Hi, Eddie. Um, 
Are you likely to persist with your three at the back, five at the back experiment? Uh, yeah, I think it's something that we will look at. Definitely, I, I, I liked us against Manchester City in lots of respects. Um, I thought defensively we looked pretty good. The two goals we conceded were, um, I think, unfortunate. One was a big deflection. Uh, well, took both goals at quite big deflections. Um, but yeah, I thought there was a lot to like about our performance in that game. As Lewis Hall seemed to do well, um, could this be the sort of opening for him and the, the right role in the last few games of the season? Certainly wing-back is a, a position that he's played and excelled in. I think that was the majority uh, of his time when he played at Chelsea last year. That was a position that he played. Um, yeah, I was pleased with him when he came on. It was a difficult situation in the game. I thought all the substitutes added something to our performance. Um, and yeah, I'm sure he get more game time between now and the end of the season. And, and training alongside um, a player of Sandro's quality, did that help Lewis Miley make such a fantastic impact when he played, do you think? I think when you play against um, high or with high level players, it makes you better for sure. Um, I certainly felt that in the minimal times that I did train with high level players. Um, <laughs> they can definitely, <laughs> Lee's laughing, uh, <laughs> it can definitely help your game. Um, and I'm sure Louis would benefit from all the players, all the midfielders that we have. He'll be taking different things from each one of them.